to start with um, talking about the liability question. Um, on the responsibility question, there's both a legal component to that question as well as a policy component. I'll address the legal component. I'm not sure if Mike or Jason or John want to address the, the policy component. From a legal perspective, um, if there is some kind of infectious disease outbreak at one of these sites, um, do we think there's any liability for the city? No. The way this program is being set up uh, is we are, in essence, authorizing a provider um, to, uh, it's not really rent our land, because we're not getting any rent in, in response uh, to what we're doing, but it's to use the land to allow up to 15 people to stay there. Um, just doing that, um, and really we're not doing anything other than that, other than providing some conditions under which they have to operate, is this a lack of consideration to affect the law? Um, it, we are, it, it affects how the analysis uh, may play out in a court case. Um, I mean, if somebody tries to sue us, um, we have, I mean, there are a number of different defenses that we would have, and I think I talked about um, some of those the last time the council was having a conversation about this, including the one um, in the Oregon Court of Claims Act that deals with discretionary type decisions made at a policy level. And it doesn't get any higher in the policy context than the council. And what you have decided um, is in balancing the, the risks and the benefits of allowing this kind of establishment and trying to create it in a way uh, where the city's um, monetary output is as close to zero as possible, you get to make those calls. And we think that if somebody tries to sue the city, we get to say, sorry, uh, we set this up, um, balancing the pluses to minuses, the cost to benefits. Um, the council made a policy call that although there are some risks, the benefits outweigh those risks. Um, there's, there's nothing that we have done to suggest to people who show up on those sites that the city is actually taking responsibility for ensuring that there are no infectious disease outbreaks any more than when the council authorized um, the uh, Occupy Eugene folks to be at the Washington Jefferson. Um, never got any suits out of that. Uh, if anybody had ever filed suit, um, our analysis was we win on those because again, all we did, all you did, was to say that people could use um, that property or actually what you said is that people um, would not be cited for prohibited camping through that. So, it's different if somebody falls down and breaks a leg. Yes, in the sense that, let's suppose at one of the sites that there was um, a, a sprinkler head that was you know, this much above the ground, um, something that we had affirmatively put in, right. um, there we would have some culpability. So for something like that, yes. Um, but the sites, and, I mean, unless there's something like that where the because of something we had done, uh, you know, if we uh, go in and we grade the land and we uh, create a um, big hole and then somebody falls and because of that hole at night they couldn't see it, then there's at least the possibility that there would be that kind of liability. And there's some other defenses so we have there too. So the liability issues are the opportunity village are probably more so than yes. taking care of the sites. Yes, and for opportunity one of the requirements that the council established for that is that there would be an insurance policy um, that would protect the city. And so that was part of that agreement. Those are also set up to be not permanent, but it's a year, 14, 16 month um, arrangement. Uh, the way these are being set up is, yeah, we'll let you use it. And as long as there aren't any problems, you can continue to use it up until I think it expires end of March. Um, but we also, if there are problems and they're not addressing those problems, um, the city manager has the authority to basically um, terminate the contract or terminate the agreement. It's not really a contract on 24 hours notice. And so if there are problems that are developing and the provider doesn't correct them, then we can say, you're not allowed to be on this property anymore. These are our camps, so, right? I mean, as the city, aren't they? It depends on, again, it depends on whether you're asking that as a legal question 
or as a policy question? As a legal question, my answer would be no. As a policy question, I don't know what their answer will be. Well, I'd like to hear that because I, I guess, my, like I said, my next question is do we have a responsibility to do a thorough job around the issues of community health prevention? But I, but I heard <coughs> you saying that that's a policy call, not a legal call. Well, I'm asking for recommendation. Oh. I'll um, oh, go ahead. No, I'm saying, I feel, as far as in the agreements, we have no language written or drafted on, on the health. Um, I think, and I can't speak for the providers, but I think it's safe to assume that city staff aren't looking to create an environment where people are spreading infectious diseases. That's why we had the original meeting with the county. I mean, and I also proactively yeah, working for that. I think by facilitating this meeting between the county and the service providers, they'll be in a better understanding of what some of the risks are and what potential protocols they can, uh, they can launch in the camps. Um, Dr. Pavlik, he has some examples of successful camp protocols that have been done in other cities, and is more than willing to share them, and I know he's continuing to do research in those. So I'm, I think it's safe to say that the providers will be really interested in that conversation. And so it will be, well, I'm trying to make sure we're clear on this, so if there's an issue later, we know who should be accountable in those circumstances, right? So I'm hearing you say that it should be the provider's responsibility to make sure that adequate work is done around disease prevention. Right? Yeah, yes, and, I, and I think they have a responsibility to ensure their camp is safe uh, and healthy. And at the end of the day, if it's not, then our option is 24-hour notice to shut it down. And so uh, the, the, the model in this case is, is to ask the community through these providers to take responsibility and accountability for, in this case, a, a camp of up to 15 folks. And um, what we will do is issue the equivalent of the CCRs, you know, homeowner CCR, which is an agreement. And if, uh, and if, they, if they maintain that kind of an environment on the camp, then it can continue. If they don't, then we have the option of shutting it down. The accountability is intended to be uh, for the towards the providers. Here, the trade-off for the council is if you require this, there may be some providers who say, I was willing to be the provider, but if I'm going to have to shell out dollars for an insurance policy like this, um, then I'm not willing to do it. And so again, it's a policy call. As I talked about it with staff, my conclusion was, well, our office, because I talked to a couple of people in my office about this, is that the risk is fairly small. In terms of the type of risk that Mike was talking about, you know, if there's a sprinkler head up above, we already have that potential liability because the sprinkler head is already up there and somebody was going across the side and tripped or fell and put themselves on it. We're already responsible for that. Um, other than that kind of liability, the damage liability, um, from something we previously had done that created a risk, uh, we think the risk is pretty small, one, because we don't um, based on what happened out at uh, Occupy Eugene, um, what happened there when we analyzed the possible claims that somebody might have thought about filing against the city. Um, so based on that kind of analysis, based on the likelihood that somebody might sue us, um, decided that the risk isn't very good and when balanced against what you lose by requiring liability insurance, which is you may lose some providers who are no longer willing to be providers, um, it was we analyzed it and said the balance favors not requiring the liability insurance. It's a it's a question for the council as to the risks that you want to take. And, and George is absolutely right. Um, there's the potential that somebody does sue us. Um, and if they do, then we have to defend it. If there's liability insurance, we don't. The counter is if you require the liability insurance, you may not get a program because you may not have providers who are willing to step up. And frankly, I think as a city, we are at much greater risk for being sued for not being in compliance with current Ninth, Ninth Circuit court rulings than we are for being sued by a homeless person who might become injured on one of these sites. Um, if these folks were in a position to sue the city, 
they would have uh, probably sued us already for not providing sufficient emergency shelter while we're enforcing a camping ban, or for all the illnesses, injuries, and victimization that they've suffered while trying to sleep on public land. So um, I appreciate the idea, but I'm not going to support